Hello and welcome everyone, our heart here with part one of my new Lizardmen Mortal Empires Let's Play, Total War Warhammer 2. Playing as the Ghosts of Fohawks, as Oxyontal himself, the one who hunts unseen, aiming to release the series every Tuesday, Thursday and Saturday going forward. However, for this first launch week of this brand new series, aiming to give you guys uh, daily uploads Monday through Saturday. And then next week onwards, Tuesdays, Thursdays and Saturdays will be Oxyontal upload days. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't done already. Ring that bell notification so you don't miss any of the uploads of this series. This first episode will be an hour long, as will every 10 episodes after. So we get through plenty of campaign action. And loads of you have asked if I would bring back the like targets for an early hour special at part 5 with this series. So... Uh, if you want to see an early hour special at part five, it is, of course, completely optional. If we can hit 1,000 likes on parts one, two, three, and four, then part five will be an early hour special. If not, you'll still get part five anyway. It'll just be a regular 30 to 40 minute video. Uh, but yeah, if you're looking forward to an early hour special, feel free to leave a like if you're enjoying the content. Uh, but if you're not enjoying the content, you don't want an early hour special, feel free to leave a dislike. That's totally fine as well. Obviously, we're playing this on Mortal Empires because Oxyotl's kind of whole thing is about countering and dealing and breaking the forces of chaos so i felt having that chaos invasion present uh, on the campaign uh, was a good choice for him plus i don't think i've ever actually done a lizardmen mortal empires series playing this on very hard very hard very hard difficulties you can see for campaign battle and chaos invasion i am using the recruit defeated legendary lords mod because i do want to across the course of this mortal empires campaign try and collect them all as it were for the various legendary lords for the lizard men either through traditional confederation uh, through diplomacy but if they get defeated before i get a chance to do that uh, then that's why i've got that recruit defeated legendary lords mod so that way we'll be able to get lord mazda mundi krokgar the henowin tic-tac-toe kai the wanderer and gorok in our armies uh, under Oxyotl's faction as well. Uh, in terms of campaign objectives, we'll go for the short campaign first, then the long campaign objectives. We'll take a look at those once we get onto the campaign map. Um, and I think maybe a, a bonus objective will also try to conquer all of Lustria. Anyway, let's take a look at the race attributes and the faction effects for Oxyotl and the Ghost of Fohawks and then dive on into the campaign and let our adventure begin. So as Lizardmen, our race attributes, we've got the Geomantic Web. Settlements are linked by a network which boosts the power of commandments. We have special spawnings. Periodic missions allow access to powerful blessed variants of certain units. And our army roster focuses on beasts suitable for every task, though some are so ferocious that they may lose control and charge ahead. Ghost of Fohawks, the faction effects, we have Silent Sanctums, unlock long lost sanctums in any visible region to grant Oxyotl local bonuses and secret visibility. Visions of the Old One, receive missions to thwart chaos activity around the world in return for blessed spawnings and other rewards. Suitable climate, all climates, which again, Mortal Empires had to do it with Oxyotl because he's, yeah, he's suitable for every single climate across the map. We're not going to go for a full map conquest. But uh, it'll be definitely be fun to be able to occupy areas that traditionally as a lizard men you wouldn't be able to. Gives a, a few more options. Uh, upkeep, minus 25% for skink and chameleon skinks. Uh, units, all armies. Additional plus 1% speed and missile damage per experience rank for all skink infantry. Additional plus 1 melee attack, melee defense and leadership per experience rank for all skink infantry. So they can get pretty powerful with their, with their experience uh, there as well. And then Lord Effects from Exotal. Uh, we're immune to diplomatic penalties from trespassing, which helps the fact that we'll be jumping around the map for those visions of the old ones, so we won't incur any diplomatic penalties uh, wandering over other factions' territory. We have access to masterful ambush stance, requiring less movement range to adopt uh, with a reduced detection stance, Lord's Army. Uh, armor piercing missile damage plus 50% for all skink infantry units, Lord's Army. And experience game for units plus 200% when fighting against Beastmen, Chaos, and Norska of which we'll be doing a lot. Additional starting units, we get the Chameleon Stalkers, Saurus Warriors with Shields, and Chameleon Skinks. Without further ado, let's dive on in at our Oxyotl Lizardmen Mortal Empires campaign begin. You have traveled far, Oxyotl, but you are no stranger to great and perilous journeys. The Norskan tribe you have been pursuing has managed to push past the Dark Elf Towers and threatens to move further south. The fate of the nearby Nagarothi is of little concern, but all vestiges of chaos in these lands must be eradicated nonetheless. 
for it is said that wherever the dark gods have worshippers, they also have eyes. Once these misguided warm bloods have been dealt with, you will be well positioned to infiltrate the Northgun heartland. With the Northmen's attentions occupied with warmongering southward, they will not expect your approach. For too long, they have been allowed to worship their ruinous idols. Oblivion awaits those who seek the gaze of the Chaos Gods. The world is an increasingly dark place, Oxyodal, but you are the one who hunts unseen. Cleanse the corruption one threat at a time, and may the blessings of the Old Ones continue to guide you. How they play, Ghosts of Fohawks, Visions of the Old Ones. Oxyotl is periodically sent visions of the Old Ones, which allow him to foresee and prevent calamitous events around the world caused by the forces of chaos. Whenever visions are revealed, the visions of the Old One map will be populated with mission locations that Oxyotl can instantly travel to. Destroying such threats comes with rewards, but also consequences if events are not prevented in time. Oxyotl starts the campaign with one active vision of the Old One's mission, and failing visions of the Old One missions can increase the strength of the chaos invasion or make it occur sooner. Silent Sanctums Oxyotl's knowledge of forgotten sanctums located throughout the world enables him to grant his forces powerful local effects and visibility over regions. By thwarting chaos activity foreseen in his visions, Oxyotl receives Sanctum Gems that enable him to unlock Silent Sanctums in any region. Once unlocked, the button on the province overview panel enables switching between settlement buildings and sanctum buildings. Oxyotl starts the campaign with one Silent Sanctum already unlocked, his starting settlement, the Frozen City. Deliverer of Itza. First of the Slan Mage priests spawned upon the world, Venerable Lord Croak can be awoken by any of the children of the Old Ones. By completing the quest to rouse him from his slumber, it is possible to witness and command his near unimaginable power in turning cities of the world to ruin. Geomantic Web. Lizardmen settlements are linked by an unseen network of power which spans the world. By increasing the power of the Geomantic Web in a province, a Lizardmen faction can increase the potency of any commandments issued there. Finally, Blessed Spawnings. Spawning pools of Lustria will occasionally bring forth an especially gifted set of warriors, which may be recruited once a special mission is completed. So we've got our first chapter objective issued, our first mission. Uh, unlock a Silent Sanctum. We'll need eight Sanctum Gems, and we can do that by completing our first Vision of the Old Ones mission. We'll also get 2,000 gold to our treasury. So let's go take a look at the Vision of the Old Ones map. Then we'll come back and take a look at Oxyotl. Thank you, Advisor, for the overview. So we've got our first mission here. Destroy the faction. It's the dead worship no one. We've got 20 turns to do it. Should be fairly straightforward. Our mission requirement is to destroy the following faction. The crag. We need our rewards of success. We'll get uh, new visions of the old ones. Uh, will be received. We'll get eight sanctum gems. So that'll be enough to unlock a new silent sanctum. And we'll get 5,000 gold to our treasury. Seeing as this is the kind of starting like tutorial mission for the Oxyotl campaign, the consequences of failure are not dire. You will get more visions of the old ones. Uh, but obviously, as we progress through and unlock more, you'll start seeing those consequences getting worse for us and obviously uh, potentially increasing the strength of the Chaos Invasion and making it occur sooner. So kind of even more reason why I wanted to do this Oxyotl campaign on Mortal Empires because of that Chaos Invasion. Uh, we can travel uh, instantly to these mission locations with Oxyotl, uh, but there's no need because it's in the same province that we start off with, uh, at least one of, their, one of their warriors, and then we'll take out uh, there are other settlements through uh, the Deadwood province. I think that's pretty much all of it. We can quickly go to Diplomacy. Northman come. Yeah, just those three. So that's what we'll focus on doing to start with. Let's quick, have a quick little look at our objectives. We'll be going for both the short and then the long campaign victory in the series. Kind of a bonus objective as well, uh, as I'm using the Recruit Defeated Legendary Lords mod, and I do want to try and confederate as kind of a bonus objective in this campaign all the other uh, lizard men legendary lords either through that mod or through just discovering them and then through diplomacy but uh, yeah bonus objective i want to control all of lustria as well or at least all of lustria that's on the mortal empires map uh, fingers crossed for warhammer 3 in the mortal empires 2.0 uh, campaign mode or whatever they call it they expand that and uh, add on the missing bits to the south that'd be great right have a quick little look at uh, oxyotl and his army we've got also 
a uh, Oracle of the Sacred Plaques here, which I think I'm going to have to name you my Tim for this series. So we always uh, have a Tim the Enchanter. It's a Monty Python reference uh, for those that don't know. But we always have a spellcaster, our first spellcaster usually in my Let's Plays called Tim. Uh, but for Lizard Men series in the past, uh, a lot of these spellcaster characters are called uh, Ra and then something else. So like Ratok or something like that. So we've, we've tended to call our Lizard Men Tims Ra Tim. So that's what we'll do here. Uh, Ratim, and then I don't think we'll have enough to call him the Oracle of the Sacred Plaques, but probably Ratim, the Oracle, and we'll take a look at his uh, at his spells. Just pop him into Seattle's army there. Let's have a little look at his character details. So he's on a troglodon. But it's not a specific mount option for it. It's just the model for Skink Oracles. They're on Troglodons. Uh, powerful spellcaster. And also being on that uh, Troglodon, they're uh, pretty capable in, in combat as well. They've got missile damage too. But you've got a mix of spells across all the various laws of magic. So we'll definitely be going through all that. He also increases mobility. So we'll be able to keep on moving. Telepathic connection. That's a Comet of Cassandora. Very nice. Get Gorilla Fighter there as well. Natural camouflage. Get Stalk. Yeah, that's going to be very nice there. Quick little look through Oxyotl's skill tree, and then we'll dive into that first battle. Got uh, some extra banners to start with. We've got Fireblood Toxin, which enables flamey attacks, sundering attacks, uh, and that ammunition type, which we can give to one of our missile units, and uh, Toadskin Essence, which adds the Discouraged effect, reducing leadership. Very nice. On to actually a quick little look there. He who that hunts unseen. Uh, immune to diplomatic penalties from trespassing, has access to masterful ambush stance, requiring less movement range to adapt and with a reduced uh, detection chance. Arm piercing missile damage plus 50% for all skink infantry units and experience gain for units uh, plus 200% when fighting against Beastmen, Chaos and Norska. So we'll probably be focusing on Norska a fair bit as we had in that flow of that suggestion there from the advisor. Uh, we are going to theme Oxyotl's army... Um, around skinks so if you guys have some suggestions already feel free to start popping them in the comment section also unit name suggestions on this episode just on part one even in future episodes always come back to part one to pop them in then they're all in one place nice and easy we'll start adding in those unit name suggestions for my armies once we get oxyotl's army uh to uh, a full 20 stack uh, ancient knowledge uh skill here we're definitely going to want to grab that because that gives us a uh, sanctum gem passively gained one per turn also, quite a nice uh, boost to our research rate there and unit experience. We're going to get them uh, leveled up quite nice. It also plays into his faction mechanic of adding um, more uh, stat buffs to his units uh, as they increase in their ranks as well. Uh, all of that starts at rank 12 going along this top line there. So, yeah, powers up his skinks, gives them unspottable and stalk for various skink units and chameleon units. Uh, Troglodon gets upkeep reduction across their behind enemy lines, more replenishment. A long revenge more campaign map movement range ammunition so probably start with i i doubt i'll buff up um oxyotl to start with i'll probably go through red line and just um buff up uh skinks to start with just so we can make them absolutely crazy uh, i'm pretty sure from what i've seen although I'm, i might be wrong with this but i believe with the buffs oxyotl uh, gets for skinks um he's more he gives them more buffs than to Henowin who gave some pretty substantial buffs to the Skinks as well. And I think that was the last campaign with Lizman I actually did, didn't it? Uh, Demon Bane there enables magic attacks. Ammunition, nice. Poison of the Warp. So, okay, those are more of these type uh, banners there, which is pretty cool. But, uh, yeah, pretty decent. Got Swiftness. Uh, it's all at the end. Right, let's, without further ado, dive on in and fight this first battle. Send him on in. We want to give these to... Our chameleon skinks. I think so. Yeah, we've got two of them. We've got the chameleon stalkers, which are new. Two Unitosaurus warriors. They'll be pretty solid. Uh, we've got Ratim the Oracle in there. Our skink Oracle. We've got skink cohort javelins. Three of them. Noxyotl himself, who's got lots of cool abilities. We'll take a look at that on the battle map. Have a quick little look at the terrain. And what are we up against? Two units of Marauders, two units of Marauder Hunters with Javelins. They do have a Feral Mammoth, so we'll want to try and focus that down. Norsk and Warhounds times two. Let's dive on in. Take him out. Let first blood be drawn.
Yeah, we need to focus on bringing down that mammoth. We've got the, the javelins. Let's give that a gamble. Lovely starting boost, start deployment. We got we've got fireball to start with. Okay, have a quick little look. The models just get better and better. Love it. Actually, I need to check this guy when we go um, back to the campaign. I believe he's got a trait which is a nod to Lawmaster of Sotek. Uh, another Total War uh, Warhammer content creator. Saurus Warriors. Let's um, pull out formation and push them forward. Skink Cohort. Yes, they've got limited ammunition with that, but we'll use that to try and bring down the Mammoth if we can, to start with. Got Chameleon Skinks. Have them up on the flanks over here. On skirmish mode as well. And we've got the Chameleon Stalkers. A quick look at them. They've got a Flamey Attack on their... On their... Oh, the Precursor. Oh, so they're like... From what I've seen, they, these guys are basically like uh, kind of Hasati from Room 2. Where they'll lob their, their darts at them, I think, at, on the charge. I think. It looks like they've got little blue pipes there, so maybe it's, maybe it's something different. But I thought, I thought from taking a look at other uh, people's campaigns, people were describing it more as like Hastati from Room 2. Definitely try them out. But I think, what are they? They are their shock infantry, so I'll probably want to have them behind my line and then flank on in with them. Got the opportunity to do so. We'll take off fire at will for the moment. Save those shots. Uh, we'll have uh, Ratim out there. And Oxyotl, you've got your Master Predator, which slows you down, reduces your charge, makes you snipe on spotable, and plus 20% uh, to your range. So we'll use that straight away. Don't, I don't really see the reason with Oxyotl, with this kind of playstyle, why you wouldn't want that. I start him off here. Oh, we can snipe that Lord, try and pull back, perhaps. Um, have you on skirmish mode as well. I'm thinking more, just try and bring down that, that Feral Mammoth. Um, do we actually have much in the way? Uh, won't tell me if, with missile damage if it's bonus versus large or anything like that, but that's fine. Hit you guys, pop you up here. Move on round. We have the Saurus Warriors to hold the flanks. Let's watch those guys over there. We've got to do a fair bit of, um, of micro. Oh, no. He's just gone straight in. Okay. Pull you back. Oh, that's some big damage on you. So this guy's coming in there. Doing some good damage, though. Pop that fireball in. Actually, just have all my missile units focus on that mammoth, because I reckon that's the one to uh, to deal with. On Berserk. Keep focusing on it. Broken. Right, go into them there. Nice, they broken. Seattle, if you can. Blow pipe that mammoth down. Get him stuck in. Focus on that. On their lord. 
Oh, hello. Hammer's back. This Saurus War has done a great job over there. Okay, fireball, crispy mammoth. The mammoth's going down. Top work just blasting through them there. Mammoth's just going to get away. Oh, that's, that ammo is great. Absolutely smashing them. There he is. Pew pew. Lovely stuff. Let's end the battle there without taking out that Lord. Just so that nice and weak, we can easily go finish them off. Not too bad. Not too bad. Surprised these guys actually didn't get more killed, but I was focusing down on the mammoth. Mammoth got 41. Uh, 42, sorry. Managed to stop that racking up the kills. Not all not getting many, but I think he's gonna he's not probably gonna be a, a high kill count lord because we're gonna be using him to snipe down large single entities or enemy lords. Unless it's better to, to play and focusing on lots of units. You guys let me know. Um, oh. Viral Materia uh, gives us plus 20% ammunition for three turns. That's kind of nice. Um, not a crazy amount of replenishment. Well, I think I will grab that. Harvest uh, Materials. Oh, that just took them out straight away. Oh, it's a first, first army they don't get to retreat, perhaps. Alright, so I would love to go for that. We do want to grab Root Marcher first, then we'll go through the red line. Rat him. But yeah, I just want to check your details. You should have, yet yeah, Lawmaster. There you go. So that's a, a nice nod to Lawmaster Soto. And his uh, his dog, I believe, a Labrador, who is called uh, Chloe. And there's a there's a reference in there. Really awesome. Uh, let's see, I pop that in there. Love little, little nods to creators or just, you know, people in general. You obviously had uh, uh, Henry Cavill. Yes. Him as the Witcher. <laughs> In the Elfari and the Grim, the starting is it the starting law master or character one of the nobles or something like that as the White Wolf I believe is a, is a trait there. So uh, Ratim the Oracle will go for increased mobility again, just increase our movement range right at the start. Um, where do we want to go first? That's gonna have the largest garrison. more factions over that way. I think we'll hit that one and then swing round for those two. Uh, we'll head over here. And then we'll recruit some more units. Don't know if they've added in some more regiments or not. I think there's a new... Yeah, that one. The Feral Carnosaur. He's definitely new. If there are any others, feel free to let me know. Oh, wait. I think the Thunderous one as well. Isn't that a, uh, a Kotal? No, that is a ancient stegodon. Isn't there a new flap? Oh, the spirit of uh, Tepok. Uh, Kotal. Again, if I'm pronouncing any of these wrong, feel free to correct me as well. Right, what do I want? More chameleon. I feel like I do want more of these guys. Um, can get three. Let's get another one in there. Definitely more chameleon skinks as well. That'll be three of them. How much skirmishing can I handle? Because <laughs> these guys, these got to remember, they're shock infantry. They're not frontline infantry. We've got great axe with the red crested skinks. Probably won't worry just yet. Um, but yeah, amateur. Those of you that do themed armies and and uh, stuff like that and builds. What's the what's the kind of ideal combo? Early game and then I guess end game for Oxyotl while keeping it very much skink themed. Uh, screw it. Let's go for another one of these chameleon stalkers. Let's uh, 
check those new new units out. So the Frozen City, it has been, I think it's been two years since the Tenerwin campaign, which is my last one. So what do we want to get for? I mean, we always want growth. Growth's always good. We get up to tier three, um, but it's going to be helpful. That does give us a bit more replenishment. It gives us, oh yeah, technology's bound to buildings, isn't it? I think. Yeah. Uh, Geomagic pylons. We need to remember to do that as well. We can get that Feral Bastildon, Bastildon Arc of Sotek. That's quite nice. Uh, we're already at that second tier there. The next one. Oh, this gives you Croxagores on that. Oh, cool. Um, Soros units we won't get for this first army. We'll have a second army focused on Soros units. We won't worry about that. I think let's get the growth in there. And then we can also press this little button here, which toggles over to the Silent Sanctum, as mentioned at the start. So all of them get the Unearthed Sanctum line, which you can't get rid of. That upgrades. Um, initially, it gives you visibility over the local region. Then the upgrade gives it over all adjacent regions uh, as well, which is pretty nice. You can see. So I think you, you can use these to kind of scout ahead where you want to go. But also, um, if you identify certain like choke points and things like that, you can do that to help buff up your defenses. But I think I'll probably try and use these guys, uh, these Silent Sanctums kind of further afield. Uh, to start with to just sort of scout out future targets and things like that or if we go on some we go to cool locations with um with our missions then i might well try and pop a silent sanctum in there just so i can go go back there in the future if i want to um what have we got here the unearthed column of um Choka. that gives you upkeep so i could destroy that and build something else in there uh post battle loot I think to start with, though, that's pretty pretty good. We don't want to build that in there. Then this other line, we can see the other um, building lines that you can go through. Uh, that's kind of the key one, the capstone of Tepot. You can only build one of these um, in one of your Silent Sanctums. There is, I guess, kind of technically one hidden in the Frozen City because you can always teleport back instantly to your capital. But essentially, this acts as another, another teleport stone. So again, useful for jumping around the map if you don't have uh, missions in that location. Uh, I imagine we'll probably want to pop one of these over in Norska at some point. And with these, actually, yeah, can is it only Jotl's army that can utilize this this teleport, or is it all of the armies that he? Uh, it says designates local region as the location that Oxyotl can travel to. Guessing it's own. Mm, otherwise, his army's going to be like. It'll just be him leading the charge and the others coming over and like, yeah, we'll be there in 20 turns. Don't know. Feel free to let me know in the uh, in the comment section. This one, I've seen quite a lot of people say it's pretty good because it, uh, as you can see, the base one is 25% chance of a Sanctum patrol ambush enemy armies in the local region. So, you, again, you can pop these further afield in, in a location that you're planning or maybe invading or attacking several turns down the line. But you can build this to already start harassing the local forces there, which is pretty cool. Um, do, 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 I think recruitment cost local armies. That I mean, that's what I'm going to be doing more more recruitment. Um, global turn times, or do you want the replenishment? But bigger loss reduction local armies. Uh, we can also go for this red line stuff, which basically each of these give a buff to uh, melee attack missile. Uh, attack and bat buffs defense. They probably should do that actually. Uh, can only one armory building could be yeah, so you can't have all of them or multiples of them. I think yeah, we'll go for this one actually. Restored glyph, although maybe missile strength. Maybe missile strength. We've got quite a lot of missile units, although the extra melee attack and charge and weapon strength. No, let's do that. Let's do go for that glyph. That's all good. There's a palace of ruin up there. So we'll probably be turning on them, the ag hole at some point. Research. We've already got the Seekers of Skirmishing. That's powered them up a bit. Poison attack for all of them. Nice. Ink unit upkeep cost. Yeah, we'll want to go through that one. But to get that, we need to have the Scrying Pool. So yeah, we do need to get the Frozen. So going for growth, getting the Frozen City upgraded is going to be pretty key for us. Yeah, masterful ambush. Very nice indeed. Um, got the geomantic web, but not going to worry about that just yet. Our right, the right of Sotek. 
uh, going to be probably the one we want to go for the most because it gives us uh, melee attack buff for skinks, missile strength for skinks, and pterodons. And so I assume we'll probably want some pterodons then in with uh, Oxyotl's army. Ambush success chance plus 50%. You know, lots of ambushing would be very nice indeed. Oh, right. I think that's all we can do for the first turn. Let's end it. Start munching more Norskins. It's gloriously fast. In turns. Boom. So we've got the foraging camp. Through to those extra units. Keeps just there. Yeah, keep going for that. Uh, we can upgrade this one. Oh, we get a... Oh, army abilities. Yeah, I forgot about that. Army abilities on each one as well. Uh, and that's local armies. It's only local ones. Okay. Does... What's the specific definition of local? Is that just within the local region or the local province? One would hope it's a cro it's province-wide local effects. I think so. But yeah, let's, let's buff it up. Well, I guess let's see if we have that um if we have those buffs when we go over here. So we're looking at plus 10. Oh, no, sorry. At the moment, we're looking at plus 5 melee attack. So if we compare these guys, their melee attack is currently 27. Head on over and attack here. What will it be? Oh, no, it has gone down. Okay, maybe I've got to, I've probably got to own it, though. That's why. We'll see once we take it. It's going to be a Pyrrhic victory. Re oh, because of the Marauder Champions. If we order resolve it, we lose the Soros Warriors, which we don't want to do right now, because until we can get up to a... Full stack army, these guys are pretty solid in just holding holding the flanks. So we'll dive on in and fight this one as well. Oh no, another battle where we get to see our awesome skink boys in action. Let's dive on in. Gives me more time to practice my uh, skink missile micro, which I am, yeah, not great at. We can do it. We can do it. Right. Pop you up there. I think they don't have any dogs running around. Warhounds, we can put these guys up as well. And then we'll have the Saurus Warriors pushing on up through the center. And, well, I mean, we could have these guys shock infantry just going on in. Probably not the best idea, actually. Let's have them. Let's have them over here and have the Chameleon Skinks in the middle because they're on skirmish mode anyway. Wouldn't gamble on that, I don't think. We'll have these guys to push up in the center. Oh, they're a bit off where I was expecting them to be. And do a fireball. I just realized that's a that's not a individual single entity. their lord is there just a garrison yeah keep him busy keep him busy blank on round take oxyothel out of skirmish Oh, yeah, that's it. They're definitely doing their darts. I forgot. You're like, what's that fire doing? That is their... The ammo is flaming attacks. On that stuff. That's sick. Oh, 
We'll fire in there. Saurus Warriors, if I can, try and get you out before I probably friendly fire you a lot. Get them. Oh, and you can do that. Stop them frenzying. Beautiful. Solid smash. Oh, well, lost 47. Yes, yeah, so we need to unlock another ammo type, really, to give the, the other chameleons... I, mean, I guess we'll probably want four of them, because there's there's a total of four different types. That Oxyotl can... Uh, unlock. Nice, and we'll want to just occupy it. No, so it isn't province wide. Okay, so it's only there. I don't know if I do want. Well, I mean, it's a, it is at our capital. If it's ever put under attack, it wouldn't be terrible to have those buffs to it. Yeah, let's just leave that there. That's fine. Right of Sotek is now unlocked. We don't have the money for it. Yeah, that's going to be very, very nasty. Very, very nasty. So we have we have that instead of the... Oh, no, we do have Right of Primeval Glory. Cool, cool, cool. Nice. So yeah, we'll probably be going after these guys next. So probably look to... Palace of Ruined over there. Also the Damned. Probably look to pop in a Sanctum. Slaughter the sheep. Either at Fortress of the Damned or Palace of Princes, I guess, to put it on over. Despoiled I'm assuming if a settlement gets raised, you, you lose the Sanctum with it, just like Skaven. Um, under Cities. I'm assuming it works just like that. Inspiring Presence, it will start going through that line. If they skirmish your buffs. And we will go for cooldown to cold blooded. That ups your range a little bit. That's quite cool. We'll go through that, but we want your magic first. When is the first regiment renowned? Ten. Cohorts so tech. Let's have another chameleon skink. And then What does quick learner mean? Oh, they get experience quickly. Uh, I mean, we've already got some kind of shock infantry. Let's just go for a happy little couple of units of skin cohort just to hold that, that center a bit more. And then we'll swing on over to those. Yeah, they've got two more regions to take on out. Actually, yeah, what happens if I... What happens if I hit travel now? Will that jump me out? I assume that'll jump me out of the settlement. I wonder if I can then move. I need to recruit anyway, so that will, I might try that out though. Next turn. Okay, so they're building up another army at Nagra. Yeah, let's, um, let's see if I can travel just like that. And we still got a lot of movement range. That's a really cool way to come back. And then we can strike in the same turn. Oh, I love it already. Love it. Right. Um, Jon Snow. Oh, seriously, we're going to lose all of those. What? Um, yeah, let's add that to them. Right, yeah, well, we don't want to lose those four units. So, again, here we go. High cash? Really? I don't think it's going to be. I think uh, auto-resolve. Go home, you're drunk. Yeah. 
Give that a gamble. Oh, lovely. Yes. Do that. Let's have you guys up here today. You guys there. We'll leave a little gap for the Saurus Warriors. Push forward and plug. With old Ratim supporting. In fact, you can just sit behind there. Bottle. Try and draw him into the... Uh, no, draw him in over here. Push forward to that bit. Have the javelins over there. Skirmish mode. And then let's have these guys behind the uh, Venus Kinks ready to shock in and go. Looks so cool. Move up to the battle line. Prepare to absolutely smash them. Upgrade me fireball and fire it. Oh, big damage. Yeah, yeah. That's nice stuff. We're going to take these guys all the way around here. We're going to go. Thankfully, they're pretty quick. Wow, that Marauder Chieftain is going down hard. Charge forward. You out. Focus on that one. Nice. We absolutely ruined that unit there. Pull the Saurus back. gone and there's another victory beautiful i'm loving these skinky boys yeah these stalkers as long as you can flank around with them they're great Got the Cloak of Feathers. Badge resistance. Nice. Lovely. And we will occupy. Bright Frosty. Which we can actually do if we want to. Post battle loot plus 25%. Um, recruit rank for all units plus 2. Local recruitment. And unit experience plus 80. Wouldn't be terrible. Right, we've now unlocked, so we can go up to skirmish yet. Yeah? Increase our strength there. Hunt leader, that's just for Saurians. Uh, just Saurians and Feral Carnosaurs. Sacred Guardian is for Croxagors, Temple Guard. Proud Warrior is just for Saurus units, isn't it? Yeah, so it's skirmisher. Doesn't give us a melee attack buff. Um, or our skinks, but. Uh, so it's, it's just weapon. It's weapon. No, not weapon strength. It is missile strength oh, and weapon strength, but not melee attack. There is some melee defense buff there. Let's see a melee attack somewhere. Melee attack when in foreign territory, Lord's army. 
I guess not that. That's that's fine. Yeah, we'll go through skirmish yet. Because uh, what was the other one? That was predatory fighter. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. That's him. We can get some more magic. All we want to go for harmonic convergence. Or flock of doom. What if I like flock of doom? Let's do that. And a frosty post battle loot. Can we build anything there? No, not yet. We've got arbors there. Does that jump closer over to the other one? No, it just pulls you to that to a set spot each time. So it would pull me back up there. I'm assuming I can make it across there in a single go to finish them off. Yeah, let's pop it. And then we can recruit. What are we going to recruit? Like another two of them. Keep things happy in the center. And I'll probably go for another javelin unit, actually. In fact, if I cancel that, I'm going to go for another javelin unit now. Because we've already got a fair bit of infantry. And I think it'll probably be one more chameleon stalker. Um, maybe we'll go crazy and go for another chameleon skink. Got that extra growth in the frozen city now. Okay, good. Magic web strength is at two. I think that's the starting amount. No, because we could down at one, couldn't it? Yeah. I don't know what we've done to. Is it because we've got this up? Second one. Never really quite got the hang of it. Um, oh, ruins at enemy settlement. So owned and neutral gives you default two. Okay, so it's always at. Okay, right, right, right. Yeah, we can't do anything else there. We're going to get surplus in one more turn. We could upgrade those with, but I think I'll probably wait to get this up to tier three because then we can at least get the, the added wall defenses in or rather the uh, larger, larger garrison in there. Right, let's go finish them off. See if we need to fight this one. We'll lose the Saurus unit, so we'll have to. Oh, but we get the, we get the Sanctum. Ah. Someone's in your community stalkers. We've got the army ability there. So I'm assuming then our attackers. No, it's at 24 still. I think the army ability is adjacent regions. All force in local and adjacent regions. Yeah, so those are. Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. Cool. In we go. Another battle. We do have some Norse controls. Bring them down. I think I've just got my head around pretty much most of the new mechanics that Oxidal has. If I am missing anything, do let me know in the comment section ready for part two, which will... Uh, Hopefully be out tomorrow. As I said, this first week, I'm aiming to try and release a video every single day, uh, Monday to Saturday for this series. Um, should be able to do it. And then next week, this campaign will slot into a regular Tuesday, Thursday and Saturday upload slot on the channel. Let's have you guys... Actually, yeah, up here. I don't know why I'm setting everything back. And obviously, if you want part five to be an early hour special, thousand likes on parts one, two, three, and four. Trying that again, as uh, quite a lot of you have asked me recently if I would do those like targets again for, for new series. So, yeah, give it a go. Give it a go. Because if you don't, you still get part five regardless. It just dictates how long an episode it is. All 
Gonna bring down these trolls. you pulling back there push across someone a unit there him from behind Oh, so it is a blowpipe dart as they charge in. That was huge. That absolutely wrecked them. Take him out. We're just absolutely annihilating them. I know they're the, they're the first faction we're fighting against. They're meant to be the, I guess, easy takedown. Uh-oh, crispy. Crispy's kick. Nobody did that. It's fine. Don't worry about it. We are shredding. I think we'll struggle when we come up against something with a little bit more armor to it. Yeah, he's gone. But until then, we should be able to continue stomping our way through. All, there's that, all those that dare oppose us or fight under the banner of chaos. Oxyotl, the one that hunts unseen. It's those that serve Aos. And anyone else that I decide to send him out. <laughs> Lovely. And yeah, we'll occupy. Go. Province secured. With your latest acquisition of Sanctum Gems. You now have enough to unlock a silent sanctum in any known region. The Old One's powers enshrined within will be a great aid in your struggle against chaos. Thank you, advisor. So we get Trance of Visions. New Visions of the Old One will be received. We've got eight Sanctum Gems and 5,000 to our treasury. Uh, we saw them. We had 17 turns left to complete it. Well done, my lord. Thank you. Now that the threat is neutralized, you may return home or move on to thwart chaos elsewhere. Alternatively, explore these new lands as you see fit. Cool, cool, cool. New sanctum available. Start new sanctums via the button. Yeah, so you click on that and then you can do it all, basically. So you can just plot one wherever you want. Um, but we're not going to do that just yet. Uh, have we got new visions yet? New. We could instantly teleport back home as well if we want to. Uh, what do we want to pop in here? We want growth and public order, alignment of crafting. Uh, yep. We are definitely going to want that. You got there. You've got obsidian quarry. Yep. Pop that right in there. Arganeth. Are we going to be going after you next? kind of want to hold off popping a secret sanctum until we've received our next lot of visions which should be next turn i imagine just to because then when we, wherever we jump i feel like we'll prop we'll pop a sanctum in um wherever we go to kind of support us on our adventure let's pop another point into skirmish oh we've unlocked our oh, i didn't even check his his quest quest for the golden blowpipe of tui Plus 10% range, reload time reduction plus 10%, uh, missile strength plus 10%, and we get the ability of the Golden Blowpipe, which is good arm piercing damage, effective close range, good from a higher angle, strong versus single combatant. Lovely. Uh, flock of do harmonic convergence. I think I'll go for the harmonic convergence. Power up a unit with that. Um, yeah, you know what? Let's uh, let's teleport home. I think I need to do that once a turn. Yeah, not already travelled this turn. I love that he's like, quickly, into the jungle. There you go. And, oh yeah, I forgot we can get a skink chief. What are they good for? They're good for replenishment. 
I guess we pro probably should have a skink chief in. Strategist, campaign map, movement range. That's not for us, though, is it? That's for them. What do they get? Boosting come to discover under cities. What's kind of thinking? Maybe I should send. Maybe I should send one of these guys off to discover some of the other lizard men. Although we can probably jump to a mission somewhere. Thinking long campaign, we need to hold Fohawks, which is held by uh, Hexotl. So we'll definitely confederate up with them for sure. I mean, lizard, lizard men tend to. From other campaigns, they tend to survive fairly well. We've got that recruit for defeated legendary lords just in case. So we don't miss out on collecting all the lizard men Pokemon. Um, who do I want to go for? At least shipping on the army. Let's let's aim to put this guy in the army for now. Weapon master, lovely. And what do you? Oh, you get Terradon. Oh, stay, oh, angels take on. Yes. So you can be a pretty pretty tough tough dude. Pop him to replenish troops. So, what I'm thinking, um, we can recruit a little bit more this turn. Let's merge you boys up. And then have two more come on in and leave that final slot for... Um, actually, no. Do that and have one more of them. Leave that final slot for our skink chief. Uh, although I'm actually going to get rid of this one as well. Because then we'll have you at full strength. Everyone else should be pretty much replenished apart from the Saurus Warriors. But we're not going to disband them. Not yet anyway. We'll probably keep them until they go. Uh, get defeated or until we can transfer them into another army I reckon. So we've got four turns left on the right of Ferocity. Let's end the turn. See if new visions come on up. And then we'll decide where we're going to pop that Silent Sanctum. I mean once we get his passive... Um, gem generation we can be a bit more doesn't matter if we use up some gems in there because we'll get more over eight turns anyway so we've got the golden blowpipe of uh Pertui. we in one battle against the following race norska ha huh, cool Your yeah that could be done spent in the realm of chaos granted you visions of the old ones enabling you to foresee chaos activity around the world and instantly travel to their locations to preemptively thwart them Good, good, good. So we've got some new visions. Okay, where have we got? Uh, oh, the, oh, they tell you the difficulty as well. Ooh, an army. Ooh, well, we could go all the way over there. Because then that would give us an option. To confederate with Krokgar. I mean, it doesn't matter which order we do it, we go in, really. Um, we get three... Okay, so we're not going to get a full eight. Not even going to get any Sanctum Gems from that one. That'll give you more. That'll give you three. So we still need a few more, but it don't want to take us too much longer to rank them up. We get three Blessed Chameleon Skinks. We replace our current ones. Makes them very powerful. Um, if we fail that one... So we've got... Also, also, we need to do these quickly as well. We can't hang about. Greenhorskin Settlement. Um, well, we should... For the sake of the blowpipe, we should do one of these two. When these all tell you harder difficulty, require advanced, well-equipped force. Oh, that's cool. But yeah, all these hovering over it are easy right now. That is... A... Oh, it's a different one. It's not telling me. I thought that was like there's a knife there and that one's a take a settlement though, isn't it? Um, right, well, we want to go up against Norska. Oh, we've discovered, oh, we can see all these. Oh, does that mean I can just, ah, uh, I can totally sanctum straight in there without even needing to teleport. Has that done the same thing over here? Oh, cool. Oh, I can put a sanctum. Oh, I'm guessing I can put a sanctum in that because there must be Skaven in there. The drop gap. the one to take out and then serpent coast and mordkin yeah and that would let me meet up with uh old crocus gar slaughter the sheep despoil and ravage 
Northmen come. Take those guys out or it's defeat this army there. Popping a sanctum over here and then going for the one that constantly harasses local forces will be good because we're going to be coming back there soon. Old Throg and he's keeping on him. Um... They yeah, don't need to sanctum down at Kingdom of Beasts. Although, actually, would it be terrible to pop a sanctum down there? I mean, we could actually take out the skate, take out the skaven that hold it and grab it and keep it. Um, I'm thinking, yeah, putting a sanctum down there, then I could teleport down there. Oh, choices, choices. Well. I think we'll do one up at Norska first. I think, let's hit Horn ones. Cavalry would be nice, but I think let's go for destroying the Norskan settlement and dealing with raise or conquer it. I think slaughter the sheep. Probably raise it for the moment. So we don't want to put in a sanctum there because it will get destroyed. I assume when we raise it. Railing moot. Uh, that one is to take out the army, isn't it? Beat the following lord's army. Cool. Let's put in a sanctum here then. A number of chambers and totems sit in disrepair within the silent sanctums due to millennia of neglect. By restoring these features, their power can be channeled into your local cohorts to help deal with nearby threats. And then I'm thinking we'll go for the patrols in here to, for a chance that we can maybe catch that one while it's wandering around. Um, and then we'll want something to buff up our units while we're here. So I think we'll pop in that, that glyph, I think. I don't know what the Sanctum Patrol looks like. Um, for the defense. But yeah, let's let's try that. And we can do that one for adjacent regions as well. We'll upgrade that at some point. And that should be pretty good. And yeah, we'll jump on over Sorry. and take these guys on. This is the old one. Go for that one. Bless Chameleon Skinks. Let me hold out time reduced. Travel. Hello. Oh, I didn't put my skink boy in. My chief in. Ah, I knew there was one thing we need to do. That's fine. That's all good. He's trying to get over there now. Um, okay. Whoops. I mean, we can travel him back. We'll probably travel him on somewhere else, won't we? Um, can I somehow travel you? <laughs> oh. Can't travel back because we've already traveled this turn. I think we'll have to keep you here then until he comes back for you, mate. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I could upgrade these because then that's that gets further growth. But that's only tier two. So we'll leave that for the moment. Jothel. Declare war. Yes. It's a valiant defeat. I mean, with how we've been doing so far against these guys, I am going to call bull on that. I reckon we've got this. We'll pop that leadership on there. And we will open fighting this battle for our Vision of the Old Ones next time. Next episode, which will hopefully be out tomorrow. So until then, I hope you guys have enjoyed part one of this brand new Lizardmen Octopus Mortal Empires uh, campaign. If you enjoyed it, feel free to leave a like. If you didn't, feel free to leave a dislike. Until the next one, don't forget to comment and subscribe. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Take part into the Legion. Check out my affiliates and sponsors, Games Planet and Overclocks UK. Till the next one. Ciao for now.